You know what I love, guys? I love seeing I love seeing people that don't know how to find scripture because you know what it tells me? You're seeking. So uh, I'm glad you're here today. If you uh, don't know where Mark's at, hey, that's okay. We're going to learn. Um, we're going to start in verse 26, and we're just going to read this again, guys, because I think if you're like me, here's what happens as you read the Word of God. The first time you're like, okay, yeah. The second time you're like, wow. And three or four, I don't know, five, six times later, you start saying, man, that's like rocking my whole world. Yes. You ever had that experience? Yeah. You read it the first time, and then all of a sudden, I don't know. At, we're at uh, Mark chapter four, verse twenty-six, and we're going to read verse through verse twenty-nine. And I, I'm just going to encourage you to read the word like that. Uh, just be ready for the word to just rock you about the third, fourth, fifth time. Um, because as we continue to read the scriptures and we continue to be in God's word, that it's a faithful discipline of our life, we discover more of his heart, more of his ways, more of his truth in our own lives. And uh, I want us to start with prayer. And um, Lucas, I want you to open us with prayer, man. Will you do that? Yeah. Father, you are awesome. Yeah. You're amazing. And we, uh, we come here today, Lord, not for ourselves, but to glorify you. Mm-hmm. Now, we don't want to uh, to be here in our flesh or in our own effort, but we want to we want to come to know you more. We mm-hmm. want to grow closer to you and find out who you created us to be. Yeah. Father, I pray that you bless this time, Lord. Anoint Pastor Phil. Just give him words that w- that wouldn't be his words, Lord. That mm-hmm. they, they'd be your words. Yeah. And Father, give us hearts to receive that word. Yeah. That we wouldn't just it wouldn't fall on rocky soil or on the path, but God, it would fall on on good soil, mm-hmm. Lord, and that it would birth fruit. We know we can't do anything apart from you, Lord. You're the vine, we're the branch. So God, give us the wisdom to stay connected to you today. Yeah. In Jesus' name, amen. In amen. Jesus' name, amen. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground, night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up. The seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. I want to remind us again, guys, of how important it is that we are daily sowing good seed. When's the best time to plant seed? Well, a few months ago, actually, but it's good to start today. The second best time, start today. Yeah. A lot of people say, well, why is it my garden growing better? Because you didn't start a few months ago. So I'm encouraging you, you know, it's often said, when's the best time to plant a tree? 20 years ago. Second best time, today. Yeah. So you say, well, I, I have, I've not planted real well. And we've, we've said this before, I want to say it again. This is the good news of the gospel of Jesus. You can sow a new garden. You can sow today unto yourself righteousness. Uh, You can sow... (laughs) Thank you, man. Oh, man, those are new. I don't know what to do with that. Uh, Guys, we can sow a new garden today. And, And symbolically, what we're doing in creation out there, we're getting ready to go make soil. We're getting ready to create the life and the biology and bring the biology and the geology together because if all you have is sand, silt, clay, all you've got is dirt. And I'm just going to tell you guys, trying to sow seeds in dirt makes for a lot of exercise, a lot of striving. Looks like you've worked, but nothing's going to grow. You know... Our brother Lucas prayed this prayer that the seed would fall on good soil. What's the most important thing you can do in your life? Allow the Word of God to go deeply inside of you. Letter and spirit, right? Letter and spirit. We allow, we're governed by the Word of God. We embrace the beautiful Word of God into our life. And we allow Holy Spirit to speak to us deeply. And confirm all that Jesus is saying to us. 
And as we look deeply into the law that gives life, we discover, wow, this is, these are the steps. This, if, if I'm righteous and my, my, my life is in order with God's order, God guides my steps. Little seemingly strange moments and opportunities in my life all of a sudden start to line up and crooked paths become straight. Anybody experiencing some of that? Some of the things you thought, man, I, I thought I was going to be destroyed by this. No, God's making those crooked, weird paths in your life. They're starting to straighten out. You're starting to see, maybe God really does have a plan for my life. But it starts daily with us understanding that the rule and reign of Christ, the kingdom, is like a man who scatters seed on the ground. And I'm just going to encourage us, scatter a lot of seed, good seed. Sow good seed. Sow it with one another. You know, perhaps the best place we can always start is within our own family. And you may say, well, you know, Pastor Phil, you just don't know what's going on in my family. You don't know some of the struggles and challenges, how I may have failed. You know, we have all failed our families. I've had to apologize to my wife. I've had to apologize to my children. I've had to go back and apologize to people and make things right because you know what? We blow it. But what we do is we, we recover. So, uh, who, uh, who was in the army, the military again? Who, who are our veterans here? we got a few of you, three of you. Well, see, this is one thing that I learned at Fort Jackson, South Carolina in basic training. I learned what it was to hit the deck. And what they would say there, I don't know what they said in the Marine Corps, Brian, but they would say, you get on down and get a piece of South Carolina. And you would fall flat to the ground. Literally, I would just fall from, from this prone position all the way to the ground on my hands and start busting it. And you'd be down there pushing and pushing and pushing. And uh, the drill just would act like he wasn't even paying attention. And all of a sudden, he would say these words, this word, recover. And I'm going to tell you, that, that word recover, I just can't tell you how beautiful that word is. Are you army? Who's army? No, our, oh, what are you guys? You are Marine Corps? Navy. Navy. All right. So I have no army brothers in here. It, was it recover, Brian? Uh, when you were done? They each had their own unique thing. <laughs> it probably wasn't very nice, right? <laughs> well, in the army, when they were trying to be polite, they would say recover. And, and can, I, can, I just say, can I just say it to all of us today? We're getting ready to go out there and plant a new garden, plant new seeds. And I want to just say this to us this morning as we've woken up on this beautiful morning full of life. Anybody waking up this morning with some life in you? Come on. Okay. Yes, praise God for that. You, uh, you rise and I have breath today. Here's the opportunity we all have today. We all have the ability to get ourselves off the ground and recover. We all have the ability today. That, you know what? You're not a tree. You're not fixed in one position. The beautiful thing about you is you're not a tree. You have the ability to move and change. Sow into yourselves righteousness. Scatter new seed. And night and day, here's the beautiful thing. You're not going to grow your life from there. You're not going to say, okay, now I'm going to start striving and working and sweating. No, now here you trust. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows. And guys, I want to just remind us one more time. It's God that grows you. It's God that makes your life grow. When we plant seeds in the ground, none of you are going to say, man, Pastor Phil, you can grow a heck of a garden. I want to tell you what you're going to say. Man, look at the way God gardens. All we had to do is bring some of this stuff together. Manure. <laughs> See, it doesn't make sense. The kingdom is so upside down, guys. Every time you think you've got God figured out, He uses something that seems unusable. He uses waste. You following? I, I don't want to get too graphic this morning because I know. You, have you had breakfast? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, let's let's carry on a little grosser then. You know, cow crap is waste. And why is it that God takes this manure, the crap of life, and turns it into fertility? <laughs> is that not a beautiful picture for anybody? 
You say, I got too much crap in my life. Well, I'm just, we're going to find out what you can do with crap today. <clears throat> Compost it. <laughs> Are y'all with me today? I'm excited. Y'all, I woke up and had a good cup of coffee and I'm excited. I'm ready to, I'm actually ready to preach. I know y'all ain't quite there yet, but I, I'm just excited today because I, I want us to get this in our hearts today that this stuff in the past that seemed like crap, it seemed like it was just useless. God's going to compost that. He's going to take what was seemingly a very difficult, horrible moment, moments, days, weeks, months, and redeem them. Amen. You know what the compost pile really, res- it really shows us? It shows us a picture. Let me write with my new marker here. Yeah, come on somebody. Resurrection and redemption. You know, the compost pile... This strange thing we're about to build out there. It looks like just a a mound. And people are going to say when they walk by, man, I thought they were going to do something cool. And then they're going to see all these mounds out there and say, man, what are y'all doing? Glad you're asking. Yeah, I'm wondering what that was. Well, you know, we're just going to assimilate layers as God would in the forest. And when this thing is done decomposing down... It's going to look like the forest floor. So on a scientific level, guys, when we compost, we're emulating and we're mimicking the forest floor. How does God compost? Well, birds fly into trees, birds drop their manure. Leaves fall, rain falls, sun comes, wind. Everything begins to beat and move. Other animals come along the forest floor. Grasses blow in. All kinds of stuff comes into the forest. And slowly but surely, have you been in the forest lately and looked at the soil? If you go into a mature forest, here's what you'll find. Complete soil. It's the good soil. That all by itself, in verse 28, look at it again. All by itself, the soil produces green. What I, I want to leave us with today, and I want us to just end with right here, is if you will trust God with your life. Guys, I know some of you have, have probably come into a church. You may have even come to an altar, and you came to a moment of prayer and faith in Christ. Well, I want to tell you, the journey's just begun. It wasn't a one-time moment. This whole experience you had with God through Christ, by His Spirit, was meant to be a journey, in the beginning of a journey, a life with Him. It was never meant to be just a one episode. And all of a sudden you get some guy to pray for you and your, your whole life changes. I want to tell you, it's daily. Daily we have to submit and surrender our lives to God. Daily. We have to say, God, I am going to live in unity with you. And here's what we're talking about today is we're talking about all of this. What we're really talking about is I'm going to live in unity with God in his creation. I want to live in unity with God in his creation. And if you will live in unity with God in his creation, you'll have abundance. Every day the sun rises, rain falls, wind blows. What we want to demonstrate out in this little permaculture demonstration site is that every day you can have free food. you got to start with a pot. Until you get a field, you start with pots. Until God gives you something larger, you start with where you're at. Amen? Amen. You start right where you're at. You don't say, well, God, if, if only I had this. God's not interested in what you would do with what you don't have. Help me right there. huh? He's not interested in that equation. But we love to talk about that one, right? Oh, God, if you'd only do this, I'd do that. No, you wouldn't. It's why he wants to see you faithful with your pot. He wants to see you faithful with the small things. He doesn't care about what you would do with He doesn't. He could give you. He cares about what you can do with what you have. You ready to preach that? Come on. I love that. Right? Are we, are we talking common sense? 
This is, you know what? I'm going to just tell you all something. A lot of people are always saying, oh man, all, that's all that preachy God stuff. I want to break this down today. If you will just, we're, we're just talking common sense. See, I, I believe God is just about common sense. So you can say, oh, that's just hyper spiritual. That's way up there. Heavenly talk. No, it isn't. See, here's the beautiful thing. God reveals all this truth in his creation. Amen. In the soil itself. Take a look around. He's, he's trying to talk to us. All creation testifies to the glory of God. So we see God in his creation. But here's what the New Agers have tried to tell us is that God is creation. No. God reveals himself through creation. We don't worship creation we worship the Creator. So we're not about hugging trees. Um, I honor trees. I love trees. But I don't worship trees. And we honor what God is doing in creation. And as we go out today, what we're going to work really hard on is building the soil that all by itself produces grain. Somebody, uh, I, I want to hear from you as we're going out today. What are you personally hearing from this little conversations we've been having about the garden? What is it you're hearing for yourself? Anybody? What are you hearing for yourself? Be a farmer. <laughs> All right, man. Come on. Dig at that, though. Well, I mean, in my entire life, just growing up, growing into it, Trying to be the best person I can be, planting a good seed, mm -hmm. go, and that's like you said in creation. That's how he reveals himself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good, good, good. Who else? What? What's? What are you hearing for yourself? Trusting God. Yeah. yeah. What's that going to look like for you? Good thing. Yeah, it is. It really is. Okay. Yeah, brother. I'm here and I can take the desert that I got inside me and, and grow a new garden. Come on. Man, that's hard to time. That's good stuff, man. I'm going to write that down. I can take the desert and turn it into a garden inside. Brother, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. What else, guys? Preach this for a minute. Preach it to yourself. Just accepting the things I cannot change and, and trying to work on being content right where God has me now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's made of that's big maturity right there. Well, it's, uh, it's definitely a big one. That's huge. That's the that's the shoes of a man to walk in right there. What else, guys? Dig at this for a minute. a solid foundation in, in God's creation like we're about to do. Mm. Kind of like with what Steve said, I can turn my, my broken and scarred life mm. into a, a beautiful one. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's exactly right. Amen. Exactly right, guys. Anybody else? This is good stuff. Anybody else want to unpack this a little bit more? Stepping out of the fearful man and just letting what is proven to work work. Amen. Yeah. Okay, that, that's great language right there. It's proven to work. We're not talking about a hypothetical God, are we? Yeah. This is not a theoretical God. Well, you know, we think. No. I, you know, 50 years later, you've come too late to tell me God can't change. Change me, change people, change creation redeem creation yeah absolutely we serve a god who's got a track record well 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 <laughs> who else has got a well well i want to hear it guys this is good stuff just like what you said pastor just turning crap what we have like me personally i'm just, i'm nothing but a turd yeah, we'll join the turd club. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. On that note, Pastor, it's so cool. In the hands of the gardener, yeah. he turns it. 
after we just give our life to, to Christ, yeah. he turns us into compost. Yeah. <laughs> he produces the soil. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Fertilize of the world. That's right, man. Yeah. That's right. You know, when... You know that the... the, that the, <laughs> the soul of the earth. That's exactly right. That's right. <laughs> and you, you know that that salt literally... <laughs> That salt, when it said, and, and if, if a salt, you know, has l- lost its savor, they threw it in the compost or the manure pile. You know why? Because back in the ancient days, that salt was actually what they used. It had way more minerals in it back then. So it would remineralize and get in there with the compost and become what it w- should be again. So, yeah, you know what? God just takes all these ingredients and just changes. You know, for some of you, if your, if your uh, struggle has been alcoholism, what's really cool is we're going to be using brewer's wheat today from a local brewery. Nice. I just think that's nicely symbolic, right? <laughs> You know what? Uh, We're going to take some of that that has been even uh, brought addiction to our lives and compost that. Let's stand, guys. We're going to head outside.